Welcome to For and Against, where we talk the pros and cons of a record released this week. And this week we turn our attention to James Blake's Before EP. I wasn't much of a fan of James Blake's overrated albums, but I quite loved this EP. It was very short and sweet. On headphones it sounds like when you get home from a loud club, your hearing is muffled from all the bang 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 and you play uh, come down micro house to wind down the propellers. It brings back images of overfilled ashtrays and people hunched around low tables talking about obscure Polish uh, minimal techno labels. It was actually quite soothing. Now, I would just like to say at this point that Primavera Sound is a big fan of James Blake and has promoted concerts and to invite him to the festival and various other such things. Um, and I am speaking in a strictly personal capacity when I say uh, that for me, James Blake is the Hugh Grant of house and the four weddings and a funeral of <laughs> funk. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. I like a bit of Hugh Grant and I have time in my life for four weddings and a funeral. But, Johan, you will agree, surely, that it gives a slightly limited view of culture. It's very heartfelt it's very elegant but it's a little bit bloodless isn't it and that is very much what i get from james blake especially on this ep now he's been accused of this on many occasions and um i guess he's probably gauged that too much of a good thing isn't always the best way to engage an audience which is why he's probably kept things so short and sweet he's kind of testing the waters but i've always praised the art of letting people leave the table with a with a bit of appetite left in their stomachs rather than serving a medieval feast that requires pedro my landscaper to carry me out on a wheelbarrow this works as an amuse-bouche a crispy little tart with salmon roe foam to set your stomach up for more to come. My bouche is not amused, I'm sorry. The point is here, he said that this is an attempt to get back to making club music, where he started off, he started off making this, this, this wonderful club music. And he just doesn't do it. I mean, this is music that comes from house and it comes from UK Garage, which are very sexy, dirty types of music, Ooh, all basic, yeah. exactly. Now, Johan, tell me, do you get any sex and any dirt from the Before EP? Oh no, definitely not. I mean, I don't. I can't see this being played on the dance floors of Berghain, but I can imagine this sounding in every lush five-star hotel from here to Kuala Lumpur. You know, where the kind of places where all these people hang around and do networking and after works and and all those things about talking business deals and stuff. But at the same time, you've got little warbler James Blake's playing in the background. It's very inoffensive. It's quite up to my taste. Come now, on. I've got to say that doesn't sound like a full-hearted recommendation. Very inoffensive, <laughs> perfect for playing in hotels where people to go to discuss business. I thought I was against and you were going to be four in in this uh, re- review. I love this I re- love I love business business house. <laughs> business house invented here, right? <laughs> but Johan, Johan, Johan. When James Blake started off, his initial EPs were club music, and they were brilliant. I'm talking about the CMYK EP, the Bell Sketch. It was dirty, filthy, very weird club music, and it contained some of the things he does on this EP, the weird voices. He was so good at it. So what's going on with this EP? Why is it so bloodless? There's no blood. I want a little bit of blood and dirt and filth and sex and funk. Well, that's what you could have... That you, you could sum up James Blake's career as being, or his artistry as being, a little bit bloodless. But it is, there's a fine art to the bloodlessness of James Blake. The man who seems like he's always singing sadly out of a window while he stares at rain on the London streets. Now, we've got to be careful when we talk about sad boys and James Blake in the same breath of fresh air. Because he did have a lot to say about the last review he had at, in Pitchfork for his album... What was it called? His last album. His last album. album. <laughs> His last album. I can't too remember old the title. Remember too old. Good lord. But you know, he he made a bit of a fuss on online, and he opened a very interesting discussion about vulnerability, male vulnerability, and how toxic masculinity was everywhere, and it should be condemned rather than sort of bullying and stomping down on men who share their, their emotions. So I would like to light a candle for all those men who feel a little bit sad and gloomy while they're flying on their private jets and stepping on lush carpets while they count their monies in the bank. Now, I am all for men showing off their emotions. I'm all for James Blake showing off his emotion and I think maybe labelling him as a sad boy was, was a little bit harsh. I'm going to agree with him there. But this is not my complaint. I love emotion. I love sadness. I love the fact that he sings there. 
I don't like his voice. Okay, that's not his fault. But it's oh, just... What's, what's, what's wrong with his voice? <laughs> Particularly on the last song where he really does. He seems to put on an extra wobble effect, which, given it's quite wobbly anyway, is uh, really extreme wobbly. There's extra wobbliness. Don't you just love it? <laughs> you know, adding all those little effects. It's It can... He has got a lot to answer for because you have heard a lot of wobbly effect vocals in a lot of the current pop music from young stars who decide to go this way. And... It, you could kind of say that being a little bit melancholy is fashionable, even in the urban music landscape. And I know urban is a word that is highly condemned nowadays, but you've got to forgive me. Let me go back to Hugh Grant, if I may. Oh, yes. Now, Hugh Grant started off his career doing things like full wedding and funeral. He was that, that archetypal sort of like English, quite wimpy English person. And Americans loved him. Wimpy? Did you just say wimpy? Ben, how could you? The archetypal, I'm not saying he was, but more recently in his career, he's taken on far more interesting roles. I wonder if you've seen this, the uh, the series of Very English Scandal. No. Or have you seen Paddington 2? No. <laughs> no. My mother has, actually. Yeah, yeah. She's recommended it. It's, it's on my watch list. It's very good. Paddington now, 2. We are not here to talk about Hugh Grant, though. We're here to talk about James Beck. And my point is... Hugh Grant expanded. He went a little bit naughty. He went a little bit nasty. And also he's been talking a lot about a tabloid press. Hugh Grant has become really great. And I think James Blake could do the same. Why not? Why not get caught with some transsexual prostitute in some highway? Is that what you're saying, (laughs) Ben? No, that is not what I am saying. What I am saying is maybe James Blake could add a little bit more rough and tumble a little bit of that. A very English scandal type of... Dirtiness to his to his to his production. It's a very good series, by the way. I do recommend that. I'll I'll, I'll I'll make sure I watch it. Now I am a little bit worried about something, and the track before has the sort of chorus that may become ubiquitous in videos of people raising their arms at sunsets on their Instagram reels when they feel that we should all see what their mountain bike hike looks like. So let's enjoy it before all these divorced ex ravers dealing with their midlife crises make it unbearable. Talking of that track, sounds a little bit like Anita Ward, doesn't it? Yes, it does, hasn't it? How does that chorus go? Sweet love. I'm not going to sing it now. I sing even worse. (laughs) Yeah, 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 yeah. But obviously, I'd struggle to find a judge who could make that argument in a court case. Anyway, the more I listen to this album on headphones, as I said, uh, the more I like it. And the fact that it's so short and sweet leaves me begging for more. And the only bad thing as well is that... It it kind of makes me want to go clubbing again. Even though we've said you wouldn't hear this in a club unless you add some remixes to it, some some punch to the beats, uh, it kind of makes me want to go out so I can come back home and play this record, if you know what I mean. I'm all for short records. Lovely. I'm all for showing off emotion. I'm all for that kind of thing. Uh, But this record, this EP, I'm afraid... Sorry, James Blake, nothing against you. Primavera Sound loves you, but I've got to go against. This is not an EP for me. Isn't it nice to feel sad because festivals actually hire private jets to fly you in so that you can attend your Barcelona audience? I mean, really, seriously. Sad boys, welcome. Please continue making the music you make. And if you'd like to share your opinions on this wonderful EP titled Before, please let us know in the comments section below.